Hey everyone, welcome to our sixth FreeBSD Friday. I'm Deb Goodkin and I'm the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. So before we get started, I just wanted to um, give you a couple of notes here. Um, first, you'll find the upcoming as well as the past talks with links, well, links to the past talks um, on, our, um, on our website and those links are posted in this IRC chat window. Secondly, um, if you have any questions during the talk, uh, please post those in the IRC channel and make sure you proceed the questions with a, a capital Q so that we know uh, that it's a question. So our next talk is an introduction to security on FreeBSD by Antrenig Bartanian. So here's a little bit about Antrenig. He fell in love with Unix at the age of 15 and he's been using FreeBSD since FreeBSD 9. He was the former lead of security operations at Armenia's National Computer Emergency Response Team. And now he's currently the CEO of Luria Security, a computer deception company that uses FreeBSD at its core. I think that's really cool. Anyway, he also runs the Armenia Bug Group. So now I'm happy to hand this off to Antrenig. Thank you, Deb. Um, greetings, everyone. Um, I'll try to share my screen right now for the presentation. A window. Uh, and here we go. It should be streaming in just a moment. Perfect. So today I will be talking about FreeBSD security. Um, a small disclaimers before we start. Uh, this talk is absolutely for newbies only for people who are just newly starting with FreeBSD, uh, probably they just installed FreeBSD uh, because of the former FreeBSD Friday talks. It is a very simplified presentation. It's mostly introductions to get you started, whether you're using FreeBSD on your laptop, workstation, or on a server. And we're learning as we go. Okay, so our agenda for today, we will talk about firewalls on FreeBSD, specifically on IPFW. We will also talk about other firewalls that FreeBSD has. Uh, and uh, as a little bit of advanced topic, we will also talk about security event auditing. So what is a firewall? A firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls an incoming and outgoing uh, network uh, traffic based on some rules that we have defined. Uh, this is just a sentence that I took from Wikipedia. Uh, we have multiple firewalls on FreeBSD. The first one that we have is IPFW, and we also have IP filter, and we also have the PF firewall. Let's start talking about IPFW. So IPFW is a stateful firewall written for FreeBSD. It supports both IPv4 and IPv6. It is also a, traf a traffic shaper, a packet scheduler, and it also has support for in-kernel NAT. Uh, let's start with uh, enabling IPFW. Uh, don't run these commands remotely, though. You will get locked out of your system. We can use a sysrc to modify the content of rcconf and by set setting firewall enable to yes. After that, we can restart the firewall service, or in this case, start the firewall service by running service IPFW start. Here's a screenshot of what's happening. So at the beginning, the firewall will get started. Um, we can see that it's loading some modules and we can see that we are getting some kind of rules which are being printed on our console. Uh, those are very simple um, rules that we can see. The first one, uh, which is the most important one in this image, is that uh, it allows all kinds of traffic only on your local interface, which means any kind of uh, traffic from the outside will get disconnected. So do not run this remotely. Uh, if we try to uh, ping some kind of a destination, we can see that our permission is denied and we are not allowed to do that. Okay, so let's see what's actually happening under the hood. Um, first of all, we have multiple rcconf variables that we can use to uh, manage IPFW firewall. The first one is firewall enable, as we saw, which is uh, uh, set to either yes or no. And the second one is the firewall script, which is path to a script to configure the firewall. The default configuration is etc.rc.firewall. Uh, 
Now, etc.rc firewall is a very long and a very nice shell script that has multiple uh, parameters that it can, it can get. Uh, one of those is the firewall type, which we, which we can also define in rcconf. It has multiple firewall types. I've uh, put the major ones in here. Uh, some of those are also documented very well. Uh, we have the open, which you know allows all kind of traffic. Closed, which doesn't allow any kind of traffic except on your local interface, um, on your on your loopback interface. A client, which can also do, which can only do basic connections to the outside world. A workstation, which is an advanced uh, declarative way to define what does your workstation do, and a simple, which which will only protect the local connection. So let's let's see the client mode at first. So first of all, we set the client, uh, the firewall type to client again using sysrc, and after that, we will restart the firewall. After restarting the firewall, we can see that the new rules are now being uh, set, and uh, usually IPFW flushes the old rules. Um, some interesting things that we can see here is that it allows uh, all kind of TCP connections from any to any, and it, it allows uh, any kind of TCP connection from me to the outside world. It sets up any kind of TCP connection from me to the outside world, and if a response comes back, it, it, it accepts only those connections. So any new connections will not work. It also allows some UDP traffic for DNS. After that, if we run, let's say, PKG update, we can see that it can easily go and fetch uh, any kind of FreeBSD uh, package up update related uh, files. In this case, you know, the meta.conf, the, meta the package site, anything that we need. Okay, let's look at the workstation mode. This one is a little bit is a little bit more complex. So it has some basic requirements. First of all, you should have a modern networking. The the requirements for uh, uh, to, to to define a workstation is that it should have some kind of a modern networking. It will allow it will allow some kind uh, some IP ranges to have full access to your machine. It will uh, allow to serve some services let's say a web server, and optionally, those services will be served only for some kind of IP ranges as well. Um, the setup process is, again, very similar. We use sysrc to set the firewall type to workstation, and then we can do service IPFW restart, and the firewall rules will be reloaded. Let's get an example. Uh, let's say we have some kind of a web server, right? So it will be... Um, it will be serving the HTTP and the HTTPS uh, ports, which in this case are 80 and 443, uh, using TCP for the public internet. Everyone will have access to those ports. Uh, the reason for that, you will connect to HTTP and then it will probably redirect to, to your HTTPS connection. However, at the same time, we want to, have, to be able to connect to this uh, web server via SSH or maybe connect to its database directly using Post, PostgreSQL or get some kind of updates or send some kind of files. So those will be working on other ports on TCP or UDP. So for that purpose, we can define declaratively that we want the firewall uh, my services to be defined as 80 slash TCP and 443 slash TCP. Uh, and then we will say that we want to allow those services for specific ranges. In this case, we will specify it for any, which means anyone can, can connect to these ports. And after that, we, can, we have also another variable, which is called firewall trusted, which will allow all kind of network connections. In this case, we can set it to, let's say, 192, 168, 1141. So this uh, machine, which is my internal gateway, will, will have a complete access to the uh, web server. After defining those, we uh, this is also a screenshot of how we define it. Uh, after that, when we do when we restart it, we will see that we will have a lot of rules. So first of all, we can use the IPFW list command uh, to show um, to, to, to list all the rules that we have. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So here we can see again, uh, it's allowing all kind of uh, connections on the local inter on the loopback interface with IP, IPv6, blocking any kind of traffic that it should be done, checking the states, and then it will have some uh, modern networking configuration out of the box. For example, allowing uh, allowing DHCP, it will allow all kind of DHCP connections, uh, which in this case is going to be using UDP on the port 68, and then 
on port 67. So all kinds of configurations has been thought about and has been made. You only have to de define what you need declaratively in the rccon file or using csrc, and then the workstation mode will take care of this for you. Uh, down here, we can see that it allows all kinds of uh, TCP connections from anyone to me when they are connecting to my port 80 and from anyone to me when they are connecting to my port 443. Uh, however, if I'm connecting from my uh, gateway, if I'm connecting from my internal network, in that case, all kind of connections are going to be allowed, whether that's SSH, whether that's uh, PostgreSQL connection or any kind of connection that we need to make, rsync, etc., etc. And of course, it also uh, counts the traffic. It blocks all kind of uh, nonsense like that you wouldn't need most probably, for example, uh, net bias and SMBs, which make a lot of noise in, in a network. Um, so this is a very basic idea of how the workstation mode works. OK, uh, let's continue. And it's not scrolling. And now it is. OK, let's say that you need to create some custom firewall rules. Uh, so in the custom firewall rules, we have a simplified uh, syntax uh, for, for IPFW, which the first one is to set a command, which that could be allow or deny, a rule number to be matched, an action. Uh, sorry, the command is always an add. I just mixed it again. Uh, the command is an add. So you know, I'm adding or I'm deleting a rule. And then we have the rule number and then the action, which is allow or deny the packets. A log, if we want to log the packet, we will see why would we need that uh, later. A protocol, you know, TCP, UDP, a source, uh, a source a machine or a source network, the source port, if you want to define that, uh, the destination, the destination ports, and options that we might need. So here's a custom RC firewall script that I wrote, right? So this is a very basic one at the beginning. It's going to flush all kind of IPFW, uh, sorry, all kind of rules uh, using IPFW. And uh, then it's uh, going to start adding new commands. So first of all, we can say define our public interface. So we don't have to type it every time. And then we can allow all kind of lo uh, loopback connections. And then we can start checking for states since it's a, a stateful firewall. We can allow all kind of TCP connections if they have been established. Uh, we can allow new connections if they have been um, if they have been uh, if they are going to be initiated from us. So anything new that I have no idea about that the firewall has no idea about those are going to be dropped. And we also have the UDPs, uh, ICMPs. Uh, probably we, we might also need, let's say, a TCP connection at the same time for our web server. So again, HTTP and HTTPS. And we can say, let's say, allow everything from the office IP range, right? We are allowing everything from this IP range uh, on the public interface. And at the end, we are blocking all kind of incoming traffic. So we don't, we don't get so much noise. Uh, so how do we use this? Okay, so first of all, we have to make the uh, binary, uh, the script executable. We have to make the script executable using uh, chmod plus x. We make it executable, very nice. And then we modify the uh, firewall script uh, variable in rcconf. Again, we can use uh, csrc. We set the new, uh, we set the new rc firewall script, and then we can say service IPFW restart. And now the new firewall rules are going to be reloaded. Uh, this is the process on an actual FreeBSD machine, uh, you know, running it, uh, setting it, running it, and it's going to flush. And when I use uh, IPFW list, I will see the current, uh, the current list of the of the rules. We, uh, tip: You can also use IPFW show, which will not only show you the list, but also how many times each rule has been matched. That's for that we can use IPFW show. Okay, let's say you're having a, a problem with your firewall. Uh, you want to understand what's happening. Uh, is it getting blocked? Is it not getting blocked? Is it here or not? So for that we can uh, we can log the packets. Uh, we can say add a new rule. Let's say in my case, it's uh, almost at the end, right? Rule number 60,000. Uh, deny all the packets, but log them, right? We, I have to define that I want to log them. And then I can say that I also want uh, a logging interface. Again, using CSRC, we can say that we need a logging interface. And if we do service uh, IPFW restart, we can see that now we have a new interface, um, which is called IPFW0. 
uh, you will probably have you know your LO0, your public interface, probably EM0, and then you will also see IPFW0. Now, this IPFW0 interface is actually a pseudo device. And we can uh, we can see what's happening inside it. This is everything that our firewall is going to log if we defined the log option uh, for a rule. Uh, so in this case, we can use uh, TCP dump minus I IPFW uh, by setting the interface, and we can see all kind of uh, packets moving in and out. For example, here we can see that there is a, a client connection to an SMTP port, apparently to port 25, or there's some kind of DHCP traffic moving back and forth, some kind of a DHCP broadcast. Uh, so all of those we can see uh, to do uh, some proper troubleshooting. Okay, um, we also have uh, other firewalls on FreeBSD. One of those is PF. It's a BSD licensed stateful uh, packet filter, which has been developed for OpenBSD. It has been ported to FreeBSD with starting with version 5.3. Also has been ported to NetBSD, macOS, modern macOS machines also have a PF firewall, uh, Dragonfly BSD, QNX, and many, many more. So th those are my own opinions. Uh, but why would you choose PF over others? Uh, again, at our company, we use FreeBSD down to its core. Uh, some places that we use PF is because of the dynamic reloading from a file. And why would you choose, choose IPFW on FreeBSD? Because it's developed for FreeBSD. Uh, when you need to do more advanced configuration, uh, which are more FreeBSD specific, let's say if you want to play with the jails, uh, IPFW understands those way better. So uh, in summary, FreeBSD has three firewalls, IPFW, IPFilter, PF. I didn't talk about IPFilter because I've never used it. Uh, IPFW has many uh, RCConf variables. We can use the RCConf variables uh, which start with the uh, word firewall, for example, you know, the firewall script, firewall type, and many, many more to do a declarative configuration. Or you can write your own rc.firewall for your own specific needs. Uh, if you want to read more about the firewall configurations, you can you should check the FreeBSD handbook, handbook chapter 30, which has a detailed explanation of the uh, firewall configuration, whether you are going to need NAT or you're going to need some kind of uh, pipes to declare some kind of uh, packet limits. Uh, all of those are in the handbook. You should check those out. Let's go to a security event auditing. So what is security event auditing? I think it's very, uh, a lot of people have forgot about security event auditing. Um, not sure why, but it's definitely, it's definitely should be used more. It, it helps a lot. So what is it? It's logging of security relevant system events. Anything that's an, an event happening on your system that is security relevant, we should log those uh, events. Um, why we should do those? Well, first of all, for post-mortem analysis, uh, if you are in the um, healthcare industry, in, 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 cyber in the cybersecurity industry, and in a lot of industries, uh, you are going probably to be attacked. And when you get attacked, you should do a post-mortem and you should know what happened to your system. And those are uh, very, very good ways to understand what's happening. Uh, as an intrusion detection system to see if someone got into your system. It's very also, it's also a very good way to do live system monitoring. And I read in a 10-year-old slideshow of uh, FreeBSD's audit system, this last line which says detection is much more important than prevention, which was the only talk that I saw about Audit D. Um, so yes, okay, let's, let's see how we can configure this. Okay, a uh, very small history. So originally it has been developed by McAfee Research for Apple's Mac OS X uh, back in 2003 or four. Then it has been ported to FreeBSD by the uh, trusted BSD project. Um, and it is based on Sun Microsystems basic security model. The, the file formats and the outputs, everything is based on Sun Microsystems basic security model. So let's do a small setup. Um, a small setup in this case is going to be um, starting 
audit D, the daemon that's responsible for auditing. Again, we can use CSRC, audit D, enable yes, and then service audit start, and then we can see that it's starting to audit uh, all the connections. Let's say a root user got logged in. Now in the, uh, in the var audit current file, which is a binary file, you have to use a command like PR audit, print audit, uh, to, see, to see those binaries in a plain text format. We can see some information. For example, we can see that the uh, audit process has started. And we can also see things like a login, right? There has been a local login. Someone has logged in locally on this, on this machine. Uh, in this case, they logged in as root and their login was successful. So they didn't write any kind of bad passwords. Or if someone does write a bad password, we can see in this case uh, that someone did a local login. However, the login was incorrect and we returned them a failure permission, uh, operation not permitted. Again, a very good way to see who's trying to log in. So you can keep accountability of what's happening. Um, we can also see the logouts, of course. Okay, so uh, basic files that you will need in uh, to, to set up your auditing system. Uh, the first one is PR audit, which is print audit. We also have audit reduce, which will uh, uh, filter any kind of data that you specify from those binary uh, file formats. The files that you will need for configuration uh, exist in ETC security, and those files are audit event, audit class, audit control, audit user, audit warn, a basic idea of what those are. The audit event defines an event. So those events can be mapped down to the um, uh, system calls. And after that, we can define uh, classes. Uh, of course, FreeBSD comes preloaded with those events and classes. We, we also have a uh, audit control, which is the global configuration on the system. We also have audit user for each user and audit one, which is just a shell script that runs uh, when some kind of a failure happens to, during the auditing process. We have the var audit directory, which inside that we can see the uh, a file named current, which is a symlink to the currently used log. And the logs have a, uh, a naming of a timestamp. And you will see a lot of old logs, apparently. We also have dev audit pipe, which is just a pseudo device of love of live audits. You can uh, trace them to see what's happening on, on your live system. So uh, let's see. Okay, this is a very basic example of audit control. A couple of important uh, options here. One of them is the flags. Oh, apparently we have something called flags. And other things like the file size or it should expire after which size. Uh, so it can do a file rotating. It can rotate the logs. So let's see what those flags are. Now the flags are a lot. Uh, you have you will have a you will find a list of them on the in the handbook i think it's uh let's see chapter 16 section 3 um there you will see that we have a class name so those are the class names a basic description of those classes and what they do all is all will match all uh, obviously. So then we have the AA, which is the authentication and authorization. We have the LO, which is logging and logout. We have FW, which is, you know, writing to a file or modifying a file. We can see, for example, FC, which is creating a file, FD, deleting a file, etc., etc. We can also see EX, which is exec an execution of a program. We can also follow all the executions of the program. Anything that's being done by exec VE or fork, all of those, uh, we will be able to see them and audit them if we need to. Uh, let's see a user-specific audit. Uh, so in this slide, we have a user-specific audit, which says um, if a user named Antronic V uh, does execution or creates a file or uh, writes a file, which means also modifying the file, or does some kind of a network action in case of NT, we want to audit those uh, events. So let's say user does some action. Let's say Antronic V does some action, uh, creates uh, or at least touches a file, uh, which is going to be named, let's say, freebsd is love.txt, and then listens to a port 
uh, on TCP, uh, on port 8080. So what kind of output will we have in the audit logs? So because the output of the trail of var current is a lot, uh, you might need to do some kind of filtration. So we can use the audit reduce uh, command line utility, which we can say audit reduce minus u, so specify the user of, of the, these events. So we are specifying the user, the UID as Antronic V, and uh, then we are piping that output to the uh, print, audit, print audit utility. Now we have much less output. Well, I know it's a lot, but still much less compared to before. Um, but those are only for Antronic V. So uh, a very nice thing that we can see in this case is that we have an exec VE, right? An execution is happening where we have uh, the arguments are uh, touch and then it's freebsd is love.txt and then we have a path of those binaries, attributes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we can also see open at, which is the uh, system call that happens when we use touch. So we actually uh, created a file. In this case, it's freebsd is love. And then when I ran NC, we can see an exec VE event happening, saying that uh, I used you know NC with the uh, uh, arguments of minus L, AT, AT, but this is the full path of the binary, et cetera. And the, down here, we can also see that I'm doing socket connections, right? I'm, I'm trying to open a socket, then I'm trying to bind to that uh, port and then listen to that port and then accept connections from that port. Uh, so, so all of those, we can audit them and the, uh, the abilities of auditing is actually a lot, like very a lot. Uh, the outputs are, are also a lot. A couple of uh, side notes on uh, those. You can also uh, forward the output to. You can also forward the output to syslog. That's uh, what the um, audit warn script is for. Um, and at the same time, um, one thing that, uh, well, by definition, it should have had more support for jails, which it doesn't. Uh, but it does have, for example, support for zones. But if it, uh, but uh, it will also go deep and see what's happening inside the jails as well. It's not only on the host machine. If you have jails, you can also audit those jails as well. Um, okay. So uh, troubleshooting. What happens if you don't know what's happening? Now all the live events are going to be audited in a file named audit pipe. Uh, and you can use the print audit minus L. The L, by the way, the L is to say that each event should be only on one line. Uh, fun fact that you can also say to per audit to print the output to print the output in XML. So you can also parse those XMLs in your own applications to uh, develop some kind of a monitoring system. Okay, uh, daily tips if. This was fun. Uh, always update your system, upgrade your system. Rule one of security, always upgrade your system. Upgrade your third party packages using PKG upgrade and update your uh, up and update your operating system using FreeBSD update fetch to download and then FreeBSD update to install. Um, that's all. If you have any questions, I know it's not a lot, but I hope you've learned something new if you're new to FreeBSD. Okay, well, thank you for uh, putting that together. Um, right now, we don't have any questions because um, you did such a good job <laughs> explaining everything. Um, but uh, this has been a really interesting and informative talk. We'll keep an eye out thank see you. if anybody else has any questions. Uh, jump in now would be a good time. I do wonder who uses audit D, D though. If anyone uses audit D, make a sound. All right, let's see. Okay, well, it looks like you've done an excellent job because it's quiet on the question front on our okay. end. Very good then. Well, yeah, um, it shows that you um, yes, explain everything really well. 
Okay. Oh, I think I think we have a delay. That's why they just got the video. Okay, so one person has a question. I think. Oh yes, I have. Okay, one person is using Audit D. I think. Okay. Okay. They either have a question or they're using Audit D. Well, in all cases. Okay. Let's see if anything else. Uh, okay. Well, great. Well, I'll jump in here. I guess I already jumped in. Um, also, thank you for giving uh, such a great talk. Actually, I'm really loving these introductory level um, talks that um, you just did and Lan Dan Langel last week did on uh, ZFS. And um, I think they're great for uh, new people as well as like even people who have been using FreeBSD or even developers to um, just highlight other areas that maybe they're not um, yeah, knowledgeable about. So, um, so I think that's great. And people who who miss this live talk can always access the recording, which we'll make available shortly. Um, I mean, a couple of things that I got out of the talk was um, so I I have been wondering about like what are the differences between PF and um, IPFW and um, why someone would use one or the other, and just why we have, um, you know, the choices that we have. So I like that you just gave some of the examples um, in your own opinion, as you stated, uh, which is really helpful in the end anyway for for most of us. And um, and then I also liked how you gave uh, just the basic commands for setting up IP um, uh, FW. Um, oh, I heard a question came in, so. And do you want to jump in? And oh yeah, there was a question: uh, How to filter <laughs> standard HTTPS traffic for malware JavaScript? How to filter standard HTTPS traffic for malware JavaScript? So, I, are we talking about a server, or are we talking about a client? Let's 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 focus on both of those. So, if we are talking about a server, I think uh, on FreeBSD, if you're running, let's say, an Apache web server. Um, you can use mod security, right? Mod security comes with uh, Apache and it has a lot of rules. So in case any kind of malware or an attack uh, an, or an attack attempt to inject a malware on your system, all of those can be uh, blocked. Now, if you're talking as a client, you have a free BSD laptop. Uh, I think even ad blockers these days do these, these kind of jobs. If anyone else has any idea, jump in, please. Uh, but mostly JavaScript malware can be, uh, well, a lot of ad blockers actually filter them pretty good uh, because most of advertising is malware these days. So there's that. Client side, yes. Probably is going to be more of your browser related instead of the, uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be more browser related than operating system related. Okay, any other questions? I mean, this is a great time to ask your questions. And if you have come up with questions later, that's what I would do. Uh, you can always um, you can always tweet them and tag the foundation, and then we'll make sure that the answer is posted. And and the nice thing too about doing that is that then allows other people to um, you know, see your questions and the answers, and then may um, if they weren't aware of this talk, then they may go and watch it. So it's a great way to. Give exposure to uh, security on FreeBSD as well as FreeBSD in general. So, okay. Um, well, I think um, I will close this out now. And thank you again, Antoinette. It was, it was great hearing your talk. And um, also, I believe I understand this is the first time you've given a presentation in English. And so I think you did an outstanding yes, actually, job. Yes. So, that, I think that's awesome. And thank you thank again. You. So our next talk right now is planned for September 11th. And um, the topic right now will be um, uh, determined um, at a later time. So just keep an eye on our schedule. And um, on September 25th, uh, we do have a talk on jails. And that will be given by Michael Lucas. So 
Um, I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in and see you in two weeks. So thank you.